Uh, many of Hawaii's urgent issues, food sovereignty, affordable housing, homelessness, uh, rail, public transportation, require the use of land. So this is a land question, uh, which is in short supply um, in, uh, in Hawaii. There are about 2 million acres of land held by the state, which are lands seized illegally during the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom in 1893. The uh, Apology Resolution of 1993 signed by Bill Clinton acknowledges that these lands were taken without consent or compensation. Um, these lands were ceded uh, to the U.S. and held in a public trust uh, state in order to compensate the people that the land was taken from. Now, the state now leases these lands uh, for a variety of things, industrial parks, shopping malls, astronomical observatories, large corporate uh, agricultural uh, fields for like Syngenta and Monsanto, now Hartung and uh, Bayer. And uh, last year, legislature passed a um, measure that would allow the extension of the leases for up to 100 years. Now, in the face of this, there are, are a number of Hawaiian groups, uh, Kanaka Maoli groups that are growing a little bit impatient about this and feel slighted uh, by the decisions made by the state. So my, and, and I point out that I think Aloha, Aloha Homes would, would use these lands all for that's a proposal, but but we'll get we'll get to the answer when I get to you. I see you shaking your head. So my question really is: What sorts of guidelines or limitations do you feel should be placed on the use of these Hawaiian ceded lands? Thank you very much for that really fundamental question. I'm going to start with the last part you ended on. I'm going to work my way back to Aloha Homes. Um, you know, I recognize while I was born here, then as a white man, I'm being asked, what do I think the lands that were seized illegally from native wine should be done, uh, done with them? And I wanna start by just recognizing maybe that contradiction in terms, but a very important question nonetheless. I would work with our native wine communities to help find the best pathways forward. These lands should be used to fulfill the needs of our communities, especially native Hawaiians. And so I would be a firm partner not someone, I don't believe that you put me in the back room with someone, I'm gonna come with the wise plan and then come sell it to you. I think that process is backwards. So first off, I will work with Native Hawaiian partners. Um, the district is home to Papakulea, one of the oldest Native Hawaiian homesteads and one of the only ones in an urban area. And I understand they have many concerns related to the lands being used by the Board of Water. And um, there's other concerns about the land sliding and damaging foundations. And as a neighborhood board chair, I have you know, heard their voices, attended their town halls, and I will do that to a much higher degree even uh, if I have the honor of being elected to the state Senate to work on these issues. Uh, so that's first and foremost. Now, um, uh, the local homes as their original proposal did not exclude the use of seeded lands for these purposes. So you were quite right on that. That was the first proposal. And I believe it's important we let people who try to come up with these ideas get it wrong the first time. It didn't pass. And it has since been changed to uh, explicitly exclude the use of those lands. And I think that's a great improvement, having listened to the groups. And likewise, at times, I might make mistakes in these issues. But I want you to know, in those moments, I'm going to listen and learn and correct those mistakes because no one always gets it right the first time. And when it comes to an issue of unwinding the damage of our colonial past and the exploitations of lands and Native Hawaiians, it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of working together. And that's what I'm that's what I'm promising to provide, working together to try to unwind those, undo where possible the damage, and to make a better, more righteous future for the use of these lands um, as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Doug, for that question. I do want to point out that uh, the 1978 Constitutional Convention also tried to uh, identify the ways that ceded lands should be utilized and established the Office of Hawaiian Affairs as one of the entities that was going to play a large role in the future in determining future uses of ceded lands. 
Of course, we are all familiar with the past 50 years since uh, the Constitutional Convention, where many of those goals and uh, lofty aspirations have not been realized. And so I agree that uh, Native Hawaiian beneficiary organizations, as well as ceded lands um, uh, participants, should also have a role in determining what future uses should be. I also believe that as we have moved forward, we have begun to place a much higher emphasis and value on Native Hawaiian values. And the example I would bring to your attention is this year's remarkably short period between the time that residents who were located uh, close to the Red Hill fuel storage facility first experienced water contamination in the post Thanksgiving weekend, the federal delegation, Hawaii state legislators, city council, mayor, governor, everyone pulled together. And within a three month period, partly because residents all around the, uh, all around the uh, island, as well as in many of the affected communities all came forward. And I think that's kind of what it's gonna take for us to advance specific actions that will uh, resolve many of these ceded land issues of the past. But I think this past year was a great starting point. I think we understand that in order for Hawaii to be prosperous, we are going to have to learn how to be sustainable and to incorporate Native Hawaiian values within everything that we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Rick, your question, please. Starting with Carol. Okay, so Carol and then Ian. So this is a current events kind of question. What would you do if you were elected and found yourself in strong disagreement with the leadership? This could be federal, this could be state, could be local. Carol? Okay, well, I have um, found myself in many instances where I have been the only one voting for or opposing a specific piece of legislation. So that uh, role does not frighten me. As far as um, the current leadership of the city council, you know, I have had a number of instances where I disagreed with some of the uh, public information and access decisions that the recent leadership has adopted. I am uh, a strong supporter of uh, group action, but I also believe that in instances where your community or your voters are being either disenfranchised or not being heard, it's your responsibility to stand up for them and to uh, ensure that someone is carrying the torch. So as far as standing up to leadership, that, that really is... Um, a non-question. I, I have done so on a number of occasions. And I think we can all learn to be um, uh, opposition, you know, leaders, while at the same time being respectful and civil. 